Hey guys, this is Chris. I am back and I am starting another tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is on creating a Vixen 3.0 output module. Um, nowadays with, with Vixen, uh, there's no such thing as plugins and add-ins. Um, they are all uh, different types of modules. Now, uh, to get yourself started, the best thing to do is on the uh, DIYC forums um, under Vixen release information, there, there is an introduction series. Um, it's a four-part series uh, that explains the basic concepts of, uh, of how Vixen 3 is going to work. Uh, I'm going to run through that real quick here to make sure we have at least a... a um, the start of a basic knowledge of what's going on um, and then I'd like to uh, go into the requirements that you'll need um, to make your module and also I'll run through the basic concepts of what exactly a module is um, and the parts it needs so let's start with the um, requirements uh, Vixen 3.0 now uses .NET 4.0 um, it will not work with two as in the old days um, so you'll have to download dotnet 4.0 you can get that directly off of Microsoft's website um, you also need to download Microsoft Visual C Sharp Express uh, that is another free download from Microsoft um, that is we are going to be programming in C Sharp just like uh, just like previous um, versions of Vixen um, you obviously need uh, Vixen itself to um, to create a module. You'll need uh, the DLLs um, and all that. It's, Vixen is not released at this point, um, but KC has basically provided me with everything I need to, uh, to get this tutorial going and hopefully get people running out the gate as soon as it is released. Um, for the sake of this tutorial, you'll also want to download Portmon. Um, it's from Sys Internals. You can see how it's spelled right right here. Um, it's a free download, and what Portmon does is it basically um, you can set it up to look at your serial port and see data that is going through your serial port. We'll use that to test our output module to make sure that it's actually putting, uh, you know, sending sending data out through the port. Now I do know Portmon does not work with 64-bit, so if you have Windows 7 64-bit, it won't work. But I know uh, there are some free utilities that can do the same thing that Portmon does, um, or you can do your programming on an old computer like I do. Um, so that's basically all the requirements. Um, it's not that much. So let's hit some basic concepts. Uh, just to clarify some some things up. Um, one of the major differences uh, about the new, new Vixen is uh, the idea of channels and controllers being totally separate. Um, controllers now are basically representing uh, your, your physical hardware. So for example if you have a Renard 16 you will uh, set up a controller using uh, the Renard output module. Uh, you'll tell it it has 16 outputs and boom, you're done. You should never have to touch that again unless your physical hardware changes. Uh, channels are pretty much conceptually uh, like they were before. You'll have channel for your roof line, uh, peak, door, windows, mega tree, whatever. But th uh, those channels themselves do not <clears throat> have any information on, on where the data is actually going. Um, the thing that ties these two together are called patches. What a patch is, is it tells, okay, I have the roof line channel. The patch says, okay, roofline channel, you are going out to controller one, port five. And it sends the data to the controller and your light goes on and off. Now, the channels 
receive their information, what they're supposed to be doing from effects. Effects are another type of module that you can create and I'm sure tons of people are going to be creating uh, some pretty neat stuff. Um, these effects can pretty much do anything. They can turn stuff on and off, uh, spin a mega tree, however. Uh, it's, uh, your output module, or your output, I'm sorry, your effect module uh, will basically figure out uh, what the channels need to do, the channels will do it, send it to uh, through the patches to the correct controller, and your lights will do what they're supposed to do. At least hopefully, unless you're like me and you have controllers that have burnout lights. Um, so that's the basic concept. Like I said, I ran through it really quick. I hope I explained it half decent. Um, but all of that is, ex is explained on... Uh, the DIYC website, I, I suggest you take at least a quick glance through them. Um, so let's move on to what a module is. In the old days, we had um, plugins and add ins and all that stuff. Nowadays, they are all wrapped up in one lump sum called modules. Now, there are different kinds of modules, I have some ex examples written here. Input modules, output modules, sequence, editor, effect, um, properties, and app. Um, app is kind of comparable to the uh, add-in uh, plugins from previous versions. Um, and the neat thing about these is, is for each type of module, uh, there is a base, base class set up. So basically, all we have to do is take... Um, take the base classes we can inherit from them um, and then all the uh, Vixen basically everything set up behind the scenes um, to get us going and we fill in what we need fill in we can override any uh, anything that we need specific things to go on um, one thing you'll learn to notice that Vixen 3 really doesn't assume anything um, it allows you to handle almost anything the way you want to handle it as long as you follow along the rules. Um, now modules have three parts to them, or up to three parts to them. Uh, you have a descriptor, a module instance, and module data. The first two, descriptor and module instance, they are mandatory. No module will run without them. Module data is you you can make a class um, a module data class and use it if you need it um, why would you need it if you have any kind of data that you want persisted meaning um, like for example uh, our our module is going to be um, sending data out through the serial port so we want to make it so that we have our serial port information we can open up we can set it up get our information get our baud rate get um, which com port we're sending to and have it so that when we close out vixen and then open up vixen all that information is still there you do that through the module data the descriptor is um, Basically, it, each one of these is its own class. So the descriptor class is, is basically it will uh, give all the information uh, that Vixen needs um, to get going. You, you have your, your uh, author ID, a description. Um, it has a GUID, which is a globally unique um, ID number. That is all handled in the descriptor. The module instance, which again is mandatory, that is the actual instance of your module, and that is where you, it's basically the meat and potatoes, and that's where you're really going to be doing the programming, um, having your module do whatever it is that your module will do. So that's that's a basic sum up of that. Um, I just want to carry into one more thing, um, and that is with the new release of Vixen, uh, KC is also added. Um, what's called the Vixen test bed. This is strictly for programmers to uh, be able to use to test modules they're creating, um, you know, and make, make sure everything's working right without actually having uh, to, to, you know, set up Vixen and all that kind of stuff. 
So here to start things off, um, we will go through our uh, what we were explaining about controllers, channels, and patching. Um, we can open up controllers. I'll delete this because I had that already set up. Um, basically, what you are given from I have a uh, tutorial output uh, module created um, so that I'm not running into this blind. So basically what you would do, let's let's pretend that's, say, a Renard output, um, or you have a controller output, we can have it, let's say our controller has five outputs, we'll name it, we'll just name it our test controller, and we will create that um, create that controller um, this is just asking what serial port we'll get into this um, as we're programming so there we go we have our controller made we sh like I said we should never have to touch that again unless our actual physical hardware changes this is representing our hardware so we're done there now our display um, we could have a whole bunch of things right here I have a roof line channel set up let's add another one we can uh, call it uh, mini tree let's call it mini tree red because I have red white and green on my mini trees so basically we would set up all of our channels that is the physical when you're looking at your display you can you can see the channels you can see um okay i've got a roof line mega tree whatnot that is basically going to be your channel list that's not too different from um from the old versions but remember these these channels by themselves don't know physically what controller they are going to um, in order for them to get the output to the controllers, you just need to patch them. Um, basically, what you want to do is you say, okay, roof channel, roof line. You're going to go out to our test controllers. Test controller, let's put you on output zero. Create the patch. And you can see under here, patch is made. Uh, mini tree channel. You're going to go out to test controller. Let's put you out to, to output to create the patch. Now what happens when that effect tells the channels to do something, the channels through the patch can uh, sends it out to the controller and your lights go on and off or blink or, or rotate or whatever they are supposed to do. So that's our basic uh, real quick rundown of... Um, some basic information on the in the next section I'd like to um, actually start opening up uh, uh, C sharp and create our workspace and and start to get go on the uh, actual programming <laughs>